Yep, we're on. Hey, Charles. We're on, Charles. We're on. Yes. We're on, Charles. Hi. Aloha Hi. Friday, everybody. Happy Aloha Friday. What? You're yes. going to tell me I'm wrong again? No. It's, oh. it's, it, 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 it's Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha Friday? Friday, everybody. It is Friday, right? Yes, it is. What yes, it a is. day. What a day. Oh, my God. Hang on here. Hang on here. When I get this thing going here, I feel like when, we, we, when we, got, we got 18 people on right now, brother. We got 18 people on. I feel like we are. I get on. I'm like a disc jockey over here. We get 25 according to my screen. Now we get 28. 20. We get 28. Oh. Yes. Oh, boy. But anyway, now, how's it going, bro? Oh, today's a nice day. You know, it's um, it's getting better every day. Uh, you know, I tell everybody, when you are a manager of a company that's out of Honolulu and you try to, you try to do the best you can with, uh, you know, one, one tough cookie to crack, I tell you what profession is the security profession because now with the rules that's in place here yeah, with security officers, everyone got to be licensed. It's not like before you can hire anybody. And depending on the contract, you might have to take FEMA courses. You might have to take maritime courses. You might have to take, um, of course, the CPR courses. If you work at, say, maybe at a medical facility like a hospital, you're going to have to take de-escalation courses. And that's just to get the person through the front door, allowing that person to work at the site that you have. And because manpower on the island of Kauai is so stretched thin, there's hardly any, there's hardly anybody available to work. And I mean, you throw money at them. Back in the old days, it was like the top dollar, right? It's no longer that way. He says, hey, brother, I don't care how much you guys pay. I just like no get benefits, get medical. And I understand, I understand. But again, you know, all those kind of costs, we got to pass on to the, uh, the client. And sometimes the client no can afford it. They cannot afford to, it, it makes it hard. So it's like a it's like a juggling game, boy, boy, oh boy. It's like a juggling game. But that's, why, that's, I why, I never, that's why I never went into that 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 industry, man. You know, we I stayed with the private investigation because it was so much easier to control. Yes. You know, security is a tough business. It's a competitive business. Yeah. It's a it's a business that comes with extreme liability. And um, and you know, finding people that that uh, that want to work, it's, it's getting harder and harder. So kudos to you, bro. Kudos to you for doing that. Well, brother, I tell you, you know, as a, even a CPR nowadays, you know, CPR instructor, I think I'm one of the few. I now am required because, you know, I do hotels and all that. Just to teach CPR, advanced CPR, I got to carry actually a $5 million insurance policy. <laughs> Before well, a million off. But but now they want five. So whew. maybe maybe we should go into the insurance business. That's what yeah. we should do. Oh. Maybe that's maybe that's the way to go. You know, we just go. Yeah. Anyway, uh, tonight we do have Brickwood Galateria, and if you guys know Brickwood, he's he was a former or is a former uh, state senator on Oahu, and he'll be coming out tonight to talk about some good programs for Kupuna. Yeah. Talk about the census. Uh, but, you know, we did want to touch on, before we bring them on in about 10 minutes, want to touch on some, uh, obviously, we got the new numbers today, 27 more cases. And that one new case that Hawaii, uh, that the state report shows is our case that was reported yesterday by the county. Uh, the state is about a day behind. So I know there was a lot of confusion, a lot of confusion about um, uh, the, 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 the new case that was reported by the state. But that is actually yesterday's case. So everybody just relax it's it's one case <clears throat> uh the the frustrating part again is 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 not being informed uh about the case and about um the specific oh sorry angie you're right share share this press your share yes. button start a watch party 
Oh, it's so wonderful when our viewers are reminding us what we have forgotten. But uh, yeah, go ahead and share this. But anyway, um, yeah, so we, you know, we don't know anything about it. I know I'm sure you did, Charlie. I got messages all day long. I'm one plea actually was posted. The guy was pleading for us to tell the truth, you know, because he's concerned because he he rides the bus. Exactly. Um, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, I wish I could tell you guys more information. I, I just don't have it. Um, and until the state releases that information, we, we don't know. And I know Charlie wanted to cover a little bit about the importance and, and why contact tracing is so important. So Charlie, take it away, bro. Well, you know, I, I received now, thank you, brother. You know, today I received, in fact, I received a lot of messages about, you know, what is contact tracing? Why are you folks so, so hot on that journey? And I'm gonna tell you the reason why. The reason being, regarding contact tracing, it's probably the only way you can find out who gets infected or who's, who, or who's the person transmitting the virus, okay? And normally that happens when that person doesn't feel well or went through a testing site and his results came back positive, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, remember when we said before, we always wanted to know if... We don't want to know the person's name, but where they could have gone. And as long as they let us know that, and if we can match up our timeline with that, then some of us are responsible enough. I think most of us are responsible enough to follow that lead and monitor ourselves and say, hey, I'm starting to feel different now. I was there. Could I, could I possibly have come? And this is not to ostracize anyone. This is, and this is not to ruin a business. This is just to make sure that you're safe because you know where you possibly could have come in contact. So what I did is I did a little diagram here. I want to show you this, okay? If you can see that right there, I have a number one right here. So say, for instance, this is CVS, okay? And you're right there. You walk in, and you walk in with numbers two and three. That means for certain, if you should come back with a positive test, you can say with certainty that you went into CBS with two known people, okay? But look at all the other dots around that. That represents customers within CBS that you might not know them by name, but they were close to you. That is the reason why it's important that we know what time this person was at CBS on what date, and it would be important for all of us here to know that, hey, we could have been there too. Because I can assure you that when the contract tracer talks to number one, he will definitely give the name of number two and number three. He will not give the name of all these question marks because guess why? He doesn't know their names. So for all intents and purposes, none of these people are gonna get contacted. But guess what? If they came in contact, could they have possibly caught the virus? Possibly. I'm not saying for sure, but possibly. Okay. So if that said, let's take a look at the numbers. If we've got 11 people up here that may have come in contact, say 11, and conservatively speaking, say they've come in contact with two people. That means from 11, it goes to 22. That 22 people come into contact with two people. Now it's down to 44. Then it goes to 88, 176. You see how the numbers start to grow. That's just by coming in contact. But it all starts from when the contact tracer talks to the infected person. And that's the reason why we said all along, you've gotta be able to push the questions and drive hard because you wanna know, you wanna know who you've been with, how many people, you may not know by name, but how many people you may have come in contact just in the store, okay? If you feel you were standing in line, there was a whole bunch of people close to you, you're infected. If it was me, i will be telling the contact tracer, yeah, I was at Long's, so had about maybe 15 people behind me. And we were kind of, you know, they wasn't practicing social distancing. I tried to keep my distance, but I know I came into contact with a lot of them. That's the reason why, and I'll tell you the reason why I suspect this. The numbers that the state gives us, especially when they go contact tracing, I may be wrong, but I'm going to say it right now. The numbers are too low. When you get 12 people and you say total of 20, that means that 
the 12 only when come in contact with eight. The numbers that I just used here, very, very conservative, very conservative using two. So you know that's the, just, just by the numbers alone, it's telling me that the numbers are too low. And the way I feel is they might be saying, well, you know, we contacted enough people. So eh, it's okay. I think we did our job. Have you? That's all we're saying. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just trying to tell you, that's how contact tracing works. In my opinion, that's how it should work. I understand you might have special skills in the medical side, but contact tracing, whether it be in the medical field, whether it be in a law enforcement field, private investigative field, we all do the same thing. And that is we hunt down the leads until there's no more leads to hunt down. So my question is, are enough leads being hunted down? Because that's why you go through the process of elimination. If you can eliminate all that, then you shouldn't have any problems. But I don't think we're going that far yet. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I mean, I think, like you said, a lot of people uh, may not be really uh, clear on what that is, but it, it is, you know, the success of this whole uh, pandemic and fighting this pandemic is really the contact tracing. Two things, the testing and the contact tracing. That Those are the two things that we must have, and we must have, we must be doing well. And uh, we, you know, we're we, again, we're, we're doing the testing next week, Wednesday, Kauai Beach Resort, doctorsofwaikiki.com. If you haven't uh, signed up for your testing, I don't care what the doctor, uh, Dr. Behrman says, said today on the, on the mayor's show. Uh, it doesn't, it, to me, it's irrelevant. She said that anyone can get uh, uh, antibody testing from their doctor, and they always have been able to. I beg to differ from stories that you folks all have told us. So uh, I, I'm just whatever, you know, we're, we made arrangements to bring Dr. T down uh, next Wednesday at the Kauai Beach Resort. So, so if you want to get an antibody testing, and I, and I cannot imagine a better time than now, make sure you go to doctorsofwaikiki.com and go ahead and, and sign up uh, for your appointment. Again, you got to pay the, the copay, which is typically 20 bucks. Uh, if you don't have insurance, the, the test is $49.99, and that's mm -hmm. including tax. So, um, and, and if you got issues of money issues, uh, let Charlie and I know. We're not going to let anybody yep. uh, be, be denied testing uh, because of money, okay? So I know Rhonda Morris, uh, thank you, Rhonda. One of the angels out there said she will, she will uh, pay for three tests if you cannot afford it. So contact Rhonda as well. If, um, but, but again, you know, shoot a message, private message to uh, uh, Charlie or myself. We'll make sure you get that test, uh, even if you can't afford it. Um, and you know, doctors, one of the things too, they, doctors, they, they, of, Waiki they, doctors yeah. of Waikiki, Go ahead, they, they, still, they still got the uh, affordable cares, you know, the, the affordable yeah. cares act that they use. So there, you know, there's still money's there. There's still money there. So not to worry because this thing is, is for giving you folks out there that peace of mind. And when this is all said and done, you can hold your head up high and say, I either had it and I licked it, or I, I didn't have it, and I got to be extra careful now because it's still out there. We know it's out there. Yep. We know it's out there. Brickwood has just knocked on the door. I, wanna, I wanted to really say a special mahalo. You know, Charlie, we have made a lot of friends over the, over the last few months, uh, and we, we love and appreciate each and every one of you. And today we were blessed by um, uh, Trevor Woolsey. Trevor stopped by my workplace today, and she. Uh, this is yours, Charlie. This yep. is yours. She asked you the other night. I'm gonna. I'm gonna blow the whistle, but she asked you what was your favorite color. I got mine in purple. Oh. Um, she blessed us with this, and if you're wondering what the heck this is, this is a a protector guard, and it's 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 like a uh, like a like a dive suit material. Neoprene. Neoprene. Yeah, yeah. like a neoprene with Velcro, and when you go to the store, you put this around the shopping cart. Um, the handle, so nice. and and this protects you and your kids and everybody else from the germs, from the germs. And then when you pull, you take them out, you fold them in half, keeping the germs inside. Pull them, pull them. Comes with a nice little baggie. I feel like I'm on QVC right now. Um, <laughs> and then you put them in the baggie, just like that. Draw a string, whoop, put them in your purse. Uh, come home, hand wash it, and you're ready to go for the next time. So Trevor. Woolsey, thank you very much. I will just going to show you. you um, this is what the colors that are available. Red, purple, blue, pink, green, gray, 
pink camouflage, regular camouflage. This is what it looks like. Uh, so if you guys are interested, Trevor, T-R-E-V-A, Woolsey. Her number is 639-7079. 639-7079. Get in touch with her. You can also find her on Facebook. And um, hooked up. Again, we, we, we don't, you know, we don't, we're not here to promote businesses or anything, but when we come across something that's going to help you and it's keep you safe and protect you, um, I definitely gonna gonna share it with everybody I know. So uh, anyway, with that, thanks again, Trevor. Appreciate you. We're gonna bring in uh, Mr. Brickwood Galatera. I haven't seen him for a long, long time. But the still look young, boy. He no age. This guy, this guy no age. I don't know what the heck is his secret. I don't know. You know, he lives in a big city. Look at that. Look at him. He still look looks like he looked 30 years ago. Oh, yeah. There we go. Look. <laughs> hey, how's it? Oh. Hey, how are you? This, again, ladies and gentlemen, this is former state senator Brickwood Galateria, and we're so blessed to have you on the show tonight, my friend. Long time no see. And Thank musician. You, brother. Yeah. How do I turn this up? Okay. You, you, you got... Um, you, you're using what? Your computer? Yep. Okay. Okay, um, wait. I think I got him. Hold on. Let me call up my 13-year-old granddaughter. <laughs> there you guys. All right. Okay. Hey, now, you can, now, now you can hear us. Yes. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, let's go have some fun. How has everything been there, Mr. Galatera? Well, I've been fine. It's so good to see you. Somebody get this guy a razor. What's <laughs> going <laughs> Hey, yeah. listen. A Portuguese guy with a beard. That's just what you need. Yeah. Well, you know, the traditional Portuguese guy, if never shave as long as I never shave, would be like this. <laughs> I, I don't grow hair. I, this is taking, this is three months worth. And look, still look like crap. But anyway, you're oh, looking yeah. good, my friend. You are looking excellent, man. Long time, yeah, long time. Thank you, brother. I'm so happy to be here with you folks. I, I feel totally overwhelmed by the talent that sits in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah just like hey, just like you wrote it charlie just yeah, like yeah. you wrote it. good good happy to, be, happy to be here happy to be here and happy father's day to both of you i mean pre, you know we're early but um if i know i know i won't see you brick but happy father's day to you and yeah, charles well. day, brother. yeah appreciate that we you know something these these Zoom meetings, these this opportunity to Zoom, has really, uh, interestingly enough, brought our family together. Because I, I, I got five uh, children, and uh, nine grandchildren, and we're able to see each other, you know, occasionally because three of them live away, uh, on the continent. So with the Zoom thing, you know, we're able to do this at least once a month. We talk in story, everybody. And we're really pleased about that. That's one of the good things about this challenging times we're in. Yes, yes. There, there uh, we are finding out there's a, actually a bunch of uh, silver linings coming out of this cloud. And, and that's, you know, we got to focus on that. We got to focus on the positives, but at the same time, we got to be aware of, of what's going on and we got to be careful. It's some trying times for all of us. And, and you know, the threat is real, I, I think. Um, you know, I think everyone recognizes that the threat is real, uh, but it doesn't always have to be so, you know, we, we can also focus on what, what good has come out of this or will come out of this. And I think this Zoom thing and the fact that even during the lockdown, many families were forced to spend time together. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. Well, it's been an interesting rhythm. Uh, the, you know, when, when we first went into the COVID era or chapter or what, whatever you call it. People just were uncertain, unsteady on their feet, had to find a new rhythm, had to make, uh, you know, uh, had to spend time with themselves too. And so, I mean, I for one did a lot of uh, in introspection and realized that, uh, you know, I don't have to be as busy as I uh, was. And I don't know, the universe just told me kind of chill. Just chillax a little bit, look around for a change, 
and things will be okay. But it was very unsure. I was very unsure about things, as you probably were. Mm-hmm. And as as we began to make our way through, we kind of find those guideposts along the way. And uh, you know, I, I for one am I'm you know I'm very pleased to be here with you folks for sure. I mean, Kauai, <laughs> Kauai was a real leader. I mean, when you got Kawakami dancing. Uh, <laughs> On, on the news, he got some moves. He got yeah. some moves. <laughs> no, but that certainly yeah. was a, that certainly took took a lot of the pressure off. Just watching you guys mayor, watching how your island, you know, kind of circled the wagons. Yeah, yep. it's, a, it's a cockles thing, you know. And so, well, we had a lot of practice over the years, over the decades. We had a lot of practice, and I think it's so nice that um, the old timers, the people that's been around from Eva and Eniki and everything else, the flooding that we've had. I mean, I think it, it, the people, that, especially the ones that's been around for so long, is trying to trying to relay that and pass that knowledge and that that aloha, the sharing. Uh, so that helps quite a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, I, we're proud of our island, I'm proud, proud of our, uh, our county government. Um, you know, I really am, and, and I'm glad to be here. Uh, I, I gotta yeah. say that, I'm, I'm glad yeah, Mel, to be here. So, you know, I, I'm not here to interview you guys, but I just wanted to know <laughs> what is because I used to do this kind of work too at one time. But what 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 is what is Raposo doing these days? Because I know that uh, you know speaking of civil servants and public service, and so what are you up to these days, Mel? Help me understand. <laughs> I actually working at the prosecutor's office right now um, as a as a special investigator for for Justin Kohler. So. I'm back in, back in the saddle there doing investigative work, which is my passion. That's my is where I come from, and decided to take a break from politics for a little while. Let the young guns. We need some young blood to come in and and give me time as well uh, to decompress and serve in a different capacity. Which I was blessed to find Charlie, and we do this show. And this show will transition from COVID into uh, current events and local events. And I think. Uh, we can do just as much, if not even more, in the way of informing and educating the public of what's going on. So that's kind of what we're doing now. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. I mean, you, you know, you're the public servant that you are, and then Charlie, you know, being along in the law enforcement area, understanding the human condition. Uh, those are really important assets to have, uh, especially if you're talking to. I, I understand if your audience like is growing each time you guys do this. Yeah. And so, I mean, who knows? It, it, you know, I, it, Charlie will tell you, man, we, we started this thing. It's, I, don't, I, got, I don't even know when we started. I should go look it up. But it's probably about three months now. And uh, we've, we've, yeah, we have attracted quite a following, a bunch of loyal viewers that are on tonight. Uh, we have a much larger audience that comes on after the live, which is so funny. I don't know. I think they don't like see their name on the, on the, on the Facebook live. <laughs> for whatever reason but um you know by the time we're done tonight we'll probably have had a, a thousand views 1200 views and then by tomorrow or sunday we're up to 3000 views it's it, it, a lot of people brickwood and that's why uh, charlie thank you charlie for for connecting with with you to bring you on because so many people are starving for information they're, they're starving they're tired of the the typical media um uh how the media portrays the the, the situation you know, our leaders get maybe two minutes or three minutes uh, soundbite to, to say their piece. Here, you, you have an hour and 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 you'll see real quick. It's, it's You're going to just run it and you, you know, say what needs to be said and sh- share what you're doing and what the good work that you are doing. And, and a lot of people are out there just, they, they, uh, they love to come here and listen to a whole array of people. It's not just me and Charlie. We just facilitate this thing. But it's the, the people, and we're, we're so lucky to have these people like yourself that agree to come on uh, on a live well, format, unscripted, no, no questions were sent to you. Have, you have no idea what the heck we're going to say or ask. So we're really thankful uh, for you that, that you could come on. Well, yeah. you know, I got, I got somebody here that says Aloha Buzzy. Oh, wow. And that's yeah. Linda Kaawai Iwamoto. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Buzz is, is uh, the nickname that I inherited from um, uh, my uncle Bricky. Uh, Brickwood Cummings was his name. And he went, He was in the army with my father. 
and the way that it works, right? They're, they're like in the, I don't think they were in the foxhole because they were in the band together. Right? <laughs> so, so, but, but it was one of those things where, you know what, uh, Buzz, you name your son after me, I'm going to name my son after you. So there's an Arnold out there with, named after my father. And then I'm named after Uncle Bricky. And Buzz comes with Brick. And so all of the old guys that I knew growing up, like Linda there. <laughs> How's it, Linda? Yeah, they know me as Buzzy. That's inside well, gl well, Gladys Spicer said to say hello. And a lot of people remember you winning the Na Hoku Hano Hano Award. They're, they're, it, later on, you can go to Facebook and look at all these people giving their well wishes, telling you aloha. And they remember you from that time, too. That's so nice, you know. That was a wonderful era. And uh, interestingly enough, you know, I, start, I, I did feed my family with my guitar. Uh, and, and that was before when we went into radio and, and television and politics. But I always like to say, and, and Mel, you'll appreciate this part because, you know, as a, as a politician type, you know, where did you come from to get there? Where did you come from to get there? So when people would tell me, well, oh, hey, listen, musician and Charlie, because you're a musician too. Oh man, you went from musician to radio, to television, to senator. I said, no, you know what? Lateral moves, all lateral moves. One ain't more important than the other, <laughs> believe me. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that they remember. That was such a wonderful time for me being uh, in, in the music uh, industry. Yeah. Troy, Troy Wai Ali Ali, he oh, says man. aloha. Wow, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Played with you a couple of times at the Cox Roost in International Marketplace. Yeah, really? The guy got yeah. a set of pipes, man. You know. We uh, attended Kauai Hau Church together. You, you got a bunch of fans on here. Charlie, why don't you and I take the night off and then Vic can just take <laughs> over? <laughs> well, it's great. We, you know, multi-generational Kauai Hau people. I mean, we go back uh, a ways. My grandma, my, my tutu man. My grandma and my tutu men were deacons. Both of them were deacons. Uh, uh, Joseph Kauhi from uh, uh, Papa Iko and Pipe Ekeo on the Big Island, the Kauhi family. Uh, uh, we're part of the Hussies, the Hussie family from Kohala. Yeah, we're Hussies. That was my mother. My mother's uh, a Kauhi. And you might know her. Uh, her, her brother, Charlie, uh, Richard Kauhi. Richard Kauhi. Yeah. As incredible musician, I mean, just gold standard Hawaiian jazz. That's where I got mm -hmm. my my DNA from. Was in the that line. Was there. was he the one that sound, sounded like uh, not uh, Nakin Cole, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so Uncle Richard, well, Uncle Richard uh, was my mother's older older and only brother. So she and, and she being with the church at Kwaiha and in the choir, very musical family. Yeah. And Uncle Richard started his musical career. He went Kaimuki, but uh, my, my tutu man sent him to Punahou for music. Mm. So he quit Kaimuki school, but he stayed with the music. Yeah. And he eventually became a, uh, you know, uh, he brought like four part harmony to Hawaii, right? And then eventually the guys who played with him, Sonny Kamaka, and uh, Johnny Costello, Jimmy Kaku, then they all went to uh, develop the group called The Invitations. Right? And they were rich in four-part harmony. And some of the offshoots of that are the surfers and the elites. Wow. And, and, and that's all from Richard Kaui, right? And so that's why I've always loved that style, that music, because uh, you know, four-part harmony is, a, is like a, is a discipline too. Not everybody can sing that style. So, like why Ali Ali them? They all know that. They all sing that style. So it's so nice to hear these names. My gosh, terrific! Wow. Wow, the surfers and the Ali's. I bring back some amazing memories. I mean, Charlie and I, we do an amazing uh, two-man uh, destruction. <laughs> two-man destruction. We, yeah, we do a two-man harmony that I think a lot of people are on the show. Um, just to see us sing at the end of the show. So maybe you can join us tonight. Charlie wrote an amazing song for this broadcast every night and we, and it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you, 
the if if you don't mind me submitting my uh, my suggestion for the name of a show, if it does take on these type of impromptu, uh, you know, uh, vibes, maybe you can refer to it occasionally as just an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> waiting to happen. <laughs> anyway, I don't mean to take up this space, so you just talk. Tell me oh. what you want me to say. Go ahead. Oh well, God. You I, tonight, um, well, I, I wanted to share real quickly because you, you talked about the surfers and, and I remember Buddy Fo and all those guys, but my, my cousin is actually Bernie Ching, the bass player with the surfers. There you go. And, but, well, you know, that's Sam, Sam Steamboat's brother, but he took the mom's name and Sammy took the father's name. But anyway, Bernie Bernie's mom and my grandma on my mom's side are sisters. Oh. And that's like going through school, they said, hey, you get the same forehead like Bernie Ching. <laughs> <I> <laughs> We cause hence that's that's the ching forehead right there. So well, a receding forehead is better than a protruding one, right? I mean, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so Bernie, I used to see Bernie more, uh, you know, in the last few years, down a beach in yep. Waikiki. You know, he he was a beach boy too down there, and yep. one of the uh, one of the original surfers, you know, with with uh, the Naluai brothers, Clayton and Allen. Clayton, Clayton Allen, Allen, Allen Hawaii, yeah. uh, with uh, um, what is his brother's name? Play piano. Silva. Uh, uh, Pat Silva. Pat. Pat Silva. Yeah. So it's Pat, Bernie, and the two Nalawai brothers. And ironically, oh, and, and you know, just because this is kind of a loose conversation, right? I mean, this yeah. is kind of. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah, so, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you just let me know when I should use the floor. <laughs> no, it's, it's a free fall on this one, man. It's a free fall. Well, see, so so uh, Clayton was the the quintessential baritone. I mean, what a set of pipes, Clay Naluai. And then Al was like the comic, but he still had a great, great uh, voice too. And what a set of what a set of pipes. And their brother. Their younger brother, uh, Buddy, Buddy mm -hmm. Nahuai, is our minister of music at Kwaihao Church. Has oh. been there for uh, forever, for such a long time. So we're, we're uh, you know, we are keyed into the Nahuais and that all, whole line of music too, right? Like we're talking the folk parts. You know? Thank you for saying that. Right on. Well, I know you got some information on some Kupuna programs, some information on the census, but before we go, I just wanted to a comment from Kaleo Perez. He said, Charlie, if you took Sammy Steamboat's place in the ring, nobody would know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I would because Sammy cannot play music, right? He couldn't play music. <laughs> he cannot. No, he cannot. He had a hell of a headbutt, though. Yeah. Well, what's going on there, Abrik, as far as... Uh, I mean, yeah. What, you know, what are you? I well, you're busy man. Well, you know, I, we did ten years in the Senate. I, I don't know how many years you were with the council, and you know, but uh, you know, in that line of work, I mean, it must be present to win on this one. <laughs> right? I mean, politics is not for everybody, and certainly appreciate anybody who steps up to serve. So I, I, uh, I was able to serve for ten years from 2008 to 2018. And then uh, I left the Senate or the Senate left me one or the other. And then I took the year to pretty much, you know, um, take care of family, take care of Ohana. We have a special needs uh, guy. He's got Down syndrome. Shawnee is uh, 45 years of age. And uh, when we were with Easter Seals a long time ago, we used to do a lot of stuff with the Kauai Easter Seals. Uh, but anyway, so he's 45 years of age now. We like to say we live with him because yeah. he's, got, he's the rock. He's the rock of our, our salvation, man. And so we're so blessed to have Sean. And so we're just kind of taking, taking the time between 2018 uh, and 20. Now it's 2020. And during the time that we're at the, uh, um, the Senate, I was deeply involved in uh, kupuna, uh, kupuna le legislation because, I mean, as we all know, I mean, we're, we're there 
but uh, there was this, you know, kind of like some personal, some personal ep episodes that dealt with uh, like some family members getting scammed, right? Kupuna scams. That's a very predatory environment uh, with no scruples whatsoever. And it's a very sophisticated uh, environment as well. So one of my aunts, she was, uh, you know, scammed. But when we went to go, and, um, when we found out, just like any other kupuna, I would, I would assume, you know, they're, we're, we're all proud people and I'm gonna put us all into that category, but we're all very proud. And for us to admit that maybe we got caught in some kind of, you know, because of the trust and because of the mere fact that our people they're not capable of doing that sort of things to like the bank account or, you know, that kind of stuff. So when we found out, uh, we began to extricate her from that environment. And then over time, I realized that we needed to keep an eye on Kupuna legislatively so that we could provide adequate protections for them from the policy perspective and into the law. As you well know, Mel, it doesn't happen overnight. You, it, you, you like have to almost condition, condition the environment of decision makers to move into that space. So, uh, the um, uh, the district that I served was uh, Kakako, Alamoana, Waikiki, Makali, Moili, Ili. Very dense, the smallest Senate district in the state, but like. This is urban Honolulu. A lot of seniors living in place. And so, you know, there were a few senior housing facilities in my district. So I would go visit them just to kind of get the temperature of the water, everybody. I would walk in, they're waiting for the senator from the district. And the first thing I tell them was, hey, everybody, hello. Let's all stand up and sing Omakalapua. <laughs> so we, everybody knows that from yeah. time. Omakalapua. Oh, so everything's loose now. Then we start to get into their concerns or their needs. And then I take that back to the, the capital with me. Before we leave, I say, okay, everybody, everybody hold hands. Hawaii aloha. You know. So I, after several of these, I went back to the capital. This was in two, 2012. Marlene Sai was working for me at the Capitol, and we played music for her in Waikiki. So there was a little bit of a switch. So she was with me, Marlene. And you know Marlene. I mean, Marlene is one of the most beautiful singers in the world. And I would often have to have to tell her, "Hey, who's the senator around here?" Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I told her, "Listen, I want to do this initiative called Kupuna Power. Kupuna Power." Let's uh, create a resource fair down in the rotunda of the state capitol once a year. And then we'll put some, you know, like resource, uh, resources, service providers for the seniors. A, a regular resource fair that we have on all the islands. You got yours on your island. We got ours on our, our island. And I said, I want to put some bling on this thing. So you can sing. We'll get Kaniela Kalikini. We're going to get uh, Nina Kelly Ivamana. And we're gonna get some, you know, some kupunas who really got the game. So we did that, and it grew and grew and grew. And for six years we did it, and we would do it in a special time of the legislature. And Mel, you understand when conference committee is, this is where <laughs> all of the everything, like, comes to a head. This is where all the big decisions are made. Legislation falls off the table. Others have traction major horse trading. This is where the action is. So I wanted Kupuna Power to be right in the pocket, right <laughs> when this was happening. Good strategy. So have, yeah, so we'd have it each year about, what, April, mid-April? And so that went on and on and on. And we Kupuna Power Day in Hawaii and this and that. And so am I doing okay with the time? Am I right? Absolutely, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. So. Over time, maybe about three three years later, uh, we put on a television show called Kupuna Power on Olelo. Yeah, Olelo. 
I don't know what the public access channel is on Kauai. Um, Oike. Oike. Yeah. Oike yeah. on Kauai. Okay, Hoike on Kauai. So we did it with the one with Olelo, which is the Oahu one. And it went on for three years. It was it was a good one. And and then when I when I, when I left the Senate, everything went dormant. Okay, so Kupuna Power had its lifespan. Um, little did I realize it was going to be chapter one. And about maybe eight years, eight, eight months ago or so, or maybe even a year, uh, young lady, young lady, um, Makena Maduli, you know her father, Charlie, Kata. Yeah, Kata Maduli. Yeah, so Kata is a great bass player and mother Janet Maduli. Well, you know, um, McKenna grew up in the showbiz and so she went into the news and then she went away to a market in LA, came back and when she came back, she started working for Hawaii News Now and K5 and k you know. And her, she had a non-compete clause, which meant that she couldn't be on the air for at least a year when she came back. So they assigned her to find content for television. And so she saw me uh, and she said, uncle, you wanna, you wanna do Kupuna Power again? I said, gee whiz, I never thought of that. Sure, okay. And then, you know, this was like last summer, then mealy mealy until early part of this year, and then we started, we started to do the Kupuna Power TV. And it, it went rather, it, it went rather well. I did two pilots in February and they included uh, like a half hour show. It's a half hour show, talk story, information, entertainment resource for, for Kupuna, or at least, you know, something interesting. So my first guest was Kimo Kahano. So I asked Kimo if he would come and be my guest because we spent like eight years doing morning radio together on FM 100 uh, here in Honolulu. And so we had a great time. And then the second half was the gal who runs Nakupuna Makamai. I don't know if you folks uh, remember in Honolulu, uh, as you drive down Alamoana Boulevard, there's the old pump station. Yeah. Right next to the gold bond building is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got the big chimney and stuff. Well, when I was in the Senate, I, I wanted to get that for our seniors as the senior resource center for Kaka'ako. And after about three years of button heads, I got them. And so we called it uh, Nakupuna Makamai. Yeah, beloved senior center. And uh, Frank Hewitt named the place for us. And so it's been going on for about four years now. And uh, we're, we're proud of that. And so... That was the second half of the first show. Second show we did, the second pilot was with Andy Bumatai. And, and Andy, you know, I mean, one of the funniest guys I know, we know, so talented too, very Akamai. Then the second half of the second show was Census 2020. So John Aieto from Census 2020 was our guest. So I went, I went and I did, I went and I, wait, hold on. Can you hold on a second? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Live TV. That's yep. Still, uh, uh, look at it. Look at his view. Look, look at the view at his house. Look at that. Jeez. You're overlooking. Uh, oh, this, 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 this is Kakaako. Man, I you tell you. Uh, you overlook uh, Kiwalo Basin. Yeah. 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 Kiwalo, Magic Island. No, no, not Kiwalo. Um, the one down, not Kewalos. This is the Bulls, Al Alamana Bulls. Oh, um, Alamana Bulls. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then you can see the Ilikai from here, and you can see Waikiki Diamond. And in fact, from here, we're kind of high. Yeah. Um, you can see Molokai on, on clear days. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So we're kind of up here. So we're, we're very, uh, you know, we're very mindful of how beautiful our Hawaii is. Uh, it's the urban core, though, and we got to, you know, it's, it, it is the... Uh, the center of the metropolis of of Hawaii. So yeah, anyway, um, so we shall I continue with the Kupuna Power story? Yes, sir, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah. So um, so what happened was we we took the two pilots. We were marketing. We we put the sponsorship package together uh, to be marketed in mid March. Okay, this is a thirty minute show. 
We went to market and the first thing that happened was pandemic. And it was beautiful shows. And I told I told the crew, uh, you know, you know what? I mean, let's just wait till fall. You know, the last thing I, I don't know whether we can uh, lift the show. Nobody move, nobody get hurt on this kind of thing. So we decided to just table the show. And then about a month later, coming into April, I told the crew, let's do Kupuna Power tips, 30 second tips, safety tips for Kupuna. So I could raise the Kupuna Power brand. I want to re relaunch the brand, Kupuna Power. And um, uh, we, we went to market in May. And the first, the first people that came back were the census. And they said, we don't want tips. We want a show. They said, that's a good problem. Okay, so we retooled the show. Meanwhile, Office of Elections called us saying that we need help in our Kupuna vote by mail strategies. Because when they announce vote by mail, we're going into this whole new season of voting, no polling places, right? So the first the vast majority of people that they got calling them were kupuna so the office of, of elections was woefully deficient in their kupuna strategies so they contacted me and asked me if i would help them strategize a kupuna ground game and we are now designing a hundred thousand piece collateral piece that is office of elections kupuna power our our uh, sponsoring friends and I know, we may put we may put uh, um, census I'm not quite sure but this is going to go out in uh, in July for the primary for the primary and that's why I contacted your beautiful wife Stephanie yes. uh, and she is our quote unquote Kupuna power ambassadress <laughs> for Kauai <laughs> and you were Ambassadress. Ambassadress. Isn't there, is that a word? Is that a word? I, I, well, it is now. I thought only Mike Victorino, Mayor Victorino, makes up his own words, but now you, that's a good word. Ambassador. <laughs> that's right. And, and she's there to address you anytime. <laughs> but uh, so Kupuna Power is, is uh, I think, a, a state of mind. Okay. Like we, we can look at it as a, a specific program that empowers Kupuna, you know, and you know, if you take a look at what's at resource centers, they got the standard models of how to uh, inform, entertain, keep the Kupuna healthy. But Kupuna power is also a, a, a state of mind. I think it's a state of mind. And I, I gotta tell you, this is like my mantra, my personal mantra is, uh, as a kupuna, and I'm 64 years old, so I'm going to be 64, uh, 65 next year. And, you know, we got a few good years left. I mean, we ain't, we ain't packing this puppy away. But the, uh, uh, the mere fact that there's a lot of kupuna programming going on, and they have on, on the airs, right, on all the different channels. And it's wonderful. And it's all about taking care of the kupuna and being respectful of the kupuna and all of the right things. Now, Kupuna Power is there for that, as well as Kupuna Power wants to flip the script, okay? Now, we are so appreciative of everyone helping us across the street. But Kupuna Power also means that we can help everybody else across the street of life. So, Kupuna Power is not all, only for Kupuna. Kupuna Power is for the Mo'opuna, it's for those middle guys. I haven't figured out what we call them yet, but Makua or Gen X or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got maybe pre-Kupuna and then you got your Kupuna, right? But there's so much to, uh, you know, the young ones can just take advantage of, and many of them do. I'm not saying they don't. But if I was, to, if I took a life experience, as an example, if, I mean, I wish I listened to my grandmother when I was in my 20s and she said, you know what, maybe you should go buy one life insurance policy right about now. 
And if I did, that insurance policy would be worth a lot of money to me. It's just those things, those little, you know, things yeah. that the kupuna can impart. And um, so it's a kako thing. I like to say it's a kako thing because kupuna can't do it alone and neither can those others who are going to be kupuna one day. So that's where kupuna power is. It, it's reminders, it's, it's uh, listening, learning, you know, maybe you get two ears, you talk, listen twice as much as you speak, kuli kuli waha when it's supposed to, and then blast away when it's your time. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I'm hoping that gave you a sense of why, why we're doing this thing, because we really believe in kupuna power. And now we have an opportunity to move the brand up into the level where everybody can, uh, can be proud of you know where they are in life. It doesn't only have to be kupuna, but you cannot be kupuna unless you get there. Right? You ain't gonna have any 40 year olds calling themselves kupuna. Uh, you know, the 50 year olds just start getting senior discounts. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so- Yeah, you know, what's interesting, Brickwood, is you know, when I was growing up, it didn't matter, my, my friends, my classmates, the guys I ran around with, not all of them were good. But it didn't matter, everyone, everybody that I knew growing up had amazing respect for the kupuna, for the grandmas and the grandpas and the aunties and the uncles and the grandma's friends and the grandpa's friends. It didn't matter if that one friend was a pilau guy, was a troublemaker. It, the grandma, grandpa, was, was that was it. Every, everybody had that respect. Um, and that, you know, that is slowly going away, uh, when I see now and, you know, even, even in my years as a police officer, uh, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, you know, when we responded to calls, grandma, grandpa was the one that came out and set people straight, you know, and, and, and calmed them down so we, the cops could, could do their thing. But I, I'm not seeing that as much now. And I, and I see it's really deteriorating. Yeah. That, that, um, the level of respect for for kupuna and I, I applaud you for kupuna power because like you said it's a mindset it's not it's just it's it's not a vehicle it, it's a it's a mindset it's it's this whole uh way of life that we got to kind of re-engage our kids our, our the, the 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 young ones uh and and try to try to teach them why it's important to listen to to the kupuna yeah and, the, the the idea of uh and you know listening is I mean, that's just essential. My, my grandmother, my grandfather, they were my protectors. Because when my mother said, go get the slipper, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew what was coming. And I used to go run to grandma, right? <laughs> See, with me yeah. was different. With, with me was different. My, my grandma, that yeah. old Puerto grandma used to tell me, go get the slipper or go get the hanger. <laughs> Or go get the water hose. And yeah. my mom would be the protector. It was really bizarre. It was just completely opposite. My grandma, holy moly, hell no. Yeah. And yeah how's about that? How's that line? That line always got to me. I never understood the line where, you know, either Ma or, or somebody, and they, you know, mom or dad get the slipper. And they're mm -hmm. telling you, just before they whack you, this <laughs> is going to hurt me. What is it going to hurt you? How can that possibly be? <laughs> they lie. <laughs> How they can lie. That be? What? <laughs> yeah. Or 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 the other line was, wait till your father gets home. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Anyway. Okay. It's so, so funny though. How, like I said, how things have evolved. You know, I mean, my God, you you, you tell a kid go get the sleep, but they call the police, you get arrested. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Well, Mel, but you know, here we are now, so. I'm happy that we have this platform. We have, uh, and it's it's grown in a way that I would never have imagined in such a short time. You know, we have Kupuna Power TV now, which in this first month or two months, we've managed to, we're into the second week of shows. And uh, the first show was Kimo and Nakupuna Makamai. The second show, we put on was Peter Apo and um, uh, Peter Apo and who was our second? See senior moment right now. The 
uh, the second show was of Peter and... Not Andy Boom. Bumatai. No, Bumatai. What happened was, was some of the filming went uh, left on that. And so oh. we had to bring Peter in really, really quickly. And then, uh, you know, after uh, the third show, we're going to have this coming week is going to be a good show. It's uh, Governor Wahe and uh, Stanford Carr, who's one of the developers, who's done a lot of, uh, he's doing a lot of senior housing around, but he's also, you know, a part of Hawaii as well. So I think, you know, and, and our sponsors are big, and this is where I think an opportunity for us to, to share uh, the importance of the census 2020, uh, shape our future, you know. And um, this is kind of where the voice went back on the, on the air when John Ayeto had asked me if I would help with the, uh, some of the uh, voicing for the commercials. So 2020, uh, 2020, census 2020, and we want to encourage everybody to, to fill out, what is the form? I got the form right here. So th this is what, this is what's been sent to everybody. I think you can see it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so we ask you to fill it out. What's interesting is there, there are questions in here where the family can all sit together on the table and answer them together. And interestingly enough, this is where you're going to teach the young ones about your own family too, because you guys all got to answer the questions together and they will know information that they wouldn't have known if you weren't sitting at the coffee table together talking census. So that's another couple of thing. You know, since it's 2020, so I want to encourage all your your uh, your viewers to to do that. And then, uh, you know, our second big sponsor, and you guys don't mind. I mean, I'm, I'm no, 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 I'm pitching, but they they came up large for us on the first Kupuna Power. Th this just came out today. It's it's the guide for the 2020 election, which is going to be vote by mail. So this came out in the Big Star advertiser today in Honolulu. I know it's going to make its way to Kauai if it hasn't already. So this is a, you know, a quick reference guide you can keep around. And then what I'm doing with Stephanie over there is we're, we're creating a kupuna guide, a kupuna a voting guide with the Office of Elections on one panel, kupuna power tips on the other panel, and resource numbers, uh, and, and the sponsors. So that's going to be coming out. I'm going to get it to you guys island first week of Kauai, uh, first week of uh, July. Oh, on good. Yeah. Well, you, you know, there's this uh, individual, just to let you know, that uh, made shirts for us, you know, and uh, we were able to raise about uh, uh, 5200 and then a, a sponsor gave us a $1,000 donation. But the gentleman is Kirk Correa, and I understand you interviewed his, was his brother, Jerry, the uh, CEO with, with St. Francis Medical Center. Of all Gary people, Brown. I forgot. Of all people, I forgot. That was the second guy on our post show. Was Jerry. <laughs> and, and, you know, Jerry, and, and Jerry, Jerry is like, he is a major player in healthcare because he, he is a CEO for St. Francis Healthcare Systems. Yeah. And they, they have been all over the Kupuna map. Because if you remember the uh, St. Francis Hospital up in Liliha. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so over the years, the sisters over there, they, they were shifting the model of healthcare. And then when Jerry them took over, what they did was they took the, the St. Francis Hospital and they transitioned over to St. Francis Kupuna Village. So it is the coolest place for Kupuna. They, they've yet to populate it. It's assisted living. Okay. So when we went up there to go meet with Jerry and Melissa, uh, Manga, and Kawaya Singh, what, uh, they showed me this facility and there's this beautiful kitchen. And I said, can we do Kupuna power from this kitchen one day? Kind of like we did Hawaii's kitchen. They said, oh yeah, we're going to, so we're going to do Kupuna kitchen up there. And then there's also a beautiful, the, the, the facilities are beautiful and they have a beautiful theater, maybe 15 seat theater. And Jerry was telling me was that the kitchen was for the Wahines, 
but the theater was for the Kupuna guys to attract them to the, that assisted living facility so that they could watch the games on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> hey, whatever works, right? Yeah. I mean, whatever works. So, oh yeah. Hey, can you talk amongst yourself for one more second? I, okay. I, gotta, I gotta show you guys. Oh man. Hey, anyway, <laughs> while, while, he's, while he's gone, ladies and gentlemen, um, that's up to the right way. The, the website for Kupuna Power is www.where, W E A R E, kupuna.com. That's where e kupuna.com. That's can the I, website. Can, can I help website. you? On the, can I help you on that one? Yeah. Uh, we are Kupuna. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> where. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I, hey, I like that, man. Where I wrote it down. Kupuna. I like that. Yeah. I wrote yeah. it down and I'm thinking, who in the heck would call it Where E Kupuna? It's like Wiley Coyote. Where E Kupuna? Hey, I, I, I'm sorry. I went to Kamehameha. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't, be so don't be sorry. We are Kupuna.com. Now, ask me why it's wearekupuna.com. Okay, and by the way, you go to that site and, and you should get all kinds of resources. Charlie, yeah. you, know, you know what? You're going to have to be, you. the, the two of you are going to be a guest on, on Kupuna Power. And we're well, going to talk about this very important. <laughs> <laughs> I just showed my age, man. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> hey, Charlie. Now yeah. I know why. Now I know why Trevor did this. <laughs> huh? What? What? Hey, what just happened there? <laughs> what just happened? Okay, so we are uh, Kupuna.com. So why isn't it? Why isn't it Kupunapower.com? Okay, why isn't it Kupunapower.com? I'm gonna pull you out of this right now, Charlie. I'm gonna pull you Thank out. Thank you, Brick. Thank you, Brick. Okay. <laughs> So why why isn't it why isn't it kupunapower.com? Okay, so um, my niece, well, one of the guys I played music with in high school at Kamehameha was uh, Miles Kahaloa, Kenneth Makuakane, Chris Kilia from the Pandanus Club, and Chris and Kenneth at the Pandanus Club, and then Wes Kiraoka, uh he played uh, bass for Mokia. Passed away, yeah. Passed yeah, for away. many years. In fact. Uh, Chris did too, and and Miles did. But what I'm trying to say is, Miles' daughter, Kirsten Kahaloa, who runs the Native Hawaiian uh, Chamber of Commerce on Hawaii Island, uh, my Calabash niece, I, I called her up and said, Kirsten, can you help me design this website? Um, and why don't you go ahead and find the domain name called punapower.com? Go find the name for whereekupuna.com. <laughs> So, so she went out and she, she came back and she said, Uncle, kupunapower.com and kupunapower.org are taken. Somebody owns those names already. Wow. And, and, and she said, and they live in the United Kingdom. Oh, geez. And, and that's, a, that's kind of a racket where you go buy names and then you sell them to people who want to buy back their names. So I said, Okay, shall we go for it? Shall we go look for it? She says, no, I got an idea. What do you think about wearekupuna.com? She didn't say where uh, <laughs> ekupuna.com. She said, uncle, wearekupuna.com. And I said, I love it. Go get it. She said, I already got it. I said, okay, we want to launch this thing on June 1st. So we accumulated all this content. And then now we have wearekupuna.com, resource numbers, we have uh, reason for being. We have census information. We got office of election information. It's going to evolve over time, but work in progress. So we invite everybody to go to that. We also invite everybody to go to uh, Kupuna Power Facebook. Uh, we have a page. And if you go to the page, we've put the last show on the page. 
So you can watch the last television program on the page. Um, so we got all of these tracks, right? We got the television show. We got the 30 second tips uh, that we're, we're placing strategically uh, within the show and outside of the show. We have the uh, wearekupuna.com. We have Kupuna Power uh, Facebook. We have the Office of Election Peace coming out soon. And the, the, the final track in the Kupuna Power universe right now, ironic, this is so ironic. It's like me calling Mel and saying, hey Mel, can you do this for me? So I called up this friend of mine and I said, hey, do me a favor. Can you, uh, can you put the logo on a coffee mug? Right, right there. So that's our Kupuna Power nice. coffee mug. That is nice. Yeah. So, I, 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 want, I, I want to say one thing, you know, thank you, Brickwood, because that this completely took me away from COVID and I appreciate it so much. Because <laughs> getting my mind thinking, I mean, I, you know, to be honest with you, I must be Kupuna because I never know what I was looking at. All I saw was where E Kupuna. <laughs> So that's I, why I, I, I'm really fine with that. <laughs> I'm really fine with that. I mean, I'm gonna, and you know what else we got? This is my last pitch for the night, and I know we're, I know we're coming to the end. Um, this we also have Kupuna Power coffee, Kupuna Power pancake mix <laughs> coming soon to your stores. <laughs> wow. Is it is it like high in fiber? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it it it's gonna it's gonna be on the website. We cook, right? We cook with Kupuna power, something like that. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. I mean, any. Just so, put the words together. I'm gonna get them mixed up. That's why. Don't put them too close. To me. <laughs> I will call my Moopuna to alert you of how to pronounce the words. <laughs> no, he definitely but, up, he means up, Kamehameha graduate, oh my gosh. I'm, huh? Yeah, that's yeah. okay. That's we okay. classmates, we classmates. I mean, he was a couple of years before. By the way, I went, I went to I gotta school. Go grab, I gotta go grab my ukulele, you guys keep talking. Wait, 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 uh, Mel, Mel, his yeah. classmate, believe it or not, is Pinsy Kawe. Oh, yeah. who's classmate? Brickwood. Pinsy, oh, really? Pinsy, uh, uh, yeah, and I mean the the Kawi family, the Kernans over there, the Hashimoto's from the Hanalei side. I mean, yeah. you know, and even I think my my classmate. In fact, I do know. Do I know this? Salet Perry. She's on a big island now. Oh. Yeah. So that's she and Daryl. Yeah. She and Daryl. She and Daryl. Yeah. Eh? yeah. They moved to the oh, big okay. island. Oh. Okay. 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 But, you know, there's a lot of friends out there that watch your show, obviously. And so I appreciate talking to them, you know, vicariously through your show. And uh, I appreciate this time together. Really do. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, flies. you know, Brickwood, I, we, um, you know, Mel and I, when, when I, when I pitched to Mel and I saw your, I saw your, um, your, your show one day, because Stephanie said, honey, come take a look at this. I was moved by the fact because every day I do a little small spots in the morning and I always give Kupuna tips about safety. Yeah. One I gave about, you know, when you're at home by yourself, how to, you know, family, if you're taking care of your loved ones, how to make sure that the carpets are tacked down, they're not folded up, you know, make sure that you get rails for them, all of that stuff. I, I just wanted to make sure. And I think a lot of it is because this year I turned 61 and I mm -hmm. told the wife, I said, well, honey, you know, we slowly getting up there. And then I started to realize, you know, thinking back how I remember when I was a water boy with the football team, how I look at everybody. And now I keep it in contact with uh, class of 69. I keep it in contact with them. Simeon Alo, James Tanigawa, all them guys. Uh, Kaipo Kanoho. Wow. And, you know, it's just it just tells me that, you know, we get to that Kupuna status, but we still got to be active and we got to make sure that everybody stay connected. Because it's it, it's sort of sad that sometimes when you lose touch at someone, like uh, uh, you know, especially when they, they you find out that you know maybe they have uh, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, you know, something like that, it really hits home really hard. So 
I think we got to make the best of it while we can. And I think your show will definitely bring bring that out. Your show will definitely bring it out. Well, we're gonna do our we're gonna do our best to be informative, be entertaining. You know, we'll be outside the box, and it's it's a wonderful platform by which to, you know, share uh, good times and share some interesting things too. And we'll see. And like I said, I hope to come to you guys' island, and we're gonna do a show over there, and you guys be my guests too for one of those. Oh. Then we can push the website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wherekupuna.com. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'll take it. You know, <laughs> if if we had an outtake show, this, that would definitely have made the outtakes, man. That was awesome. Yeah, you know, it's. Um, I just wanted to go over real quick. We are kupuna.com. Uh, that that coffee mugs is that available for sale for the public or? That's it's that's just not that's yet. Nice. It just it just happened. And then you know what I did was on, on this side. Then we put we. Uh, on this side, it has where e kupuna. <laughs> but I think it's going to show up on your island pretty soon. We, we haven't we haven't even talked about distribution for that. I just wanted to show that to you because it's going to be coming soon enough. You know, in fact, I got one for both of you guys. I got one for both of you guys. Well, thank Dang. you. I, I tell you what, we'll send you a shirt. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, I gotta tell you. I, I gotta tell you. We we uh, I'm gonna do this in the, just because I think it's so funny. Kirk Correa, Jerry's brother, came to us when we first started the show and said, "Hey, Mel, you have a picture of you and Charlie." I said, "For what?" He goes, "Bro, I'm gonna make shirts." Kirk is a T-shirt. He sells. He makes T-shirts. He's a, oh, yeah. he's a brother. guy. Yeah. Yeah. I said, "Uh, bro, nobody gonna buy that shirt." Just he goes, Bob, I'm telling you, you guys, a lot of people watching your shirt. I mean, I'm watching your show. We, uh, so let's do it. So I sent him the picture. He made this. Um, Who's that in the background? Who is and my <laughs> wife, she's my, she's my technical producer. Oh, so, yes. So this is the, this was the, the shirt. Oh, very cool. The Charlie show, flatten the curve. Very cool. So we that sold. I mean, we had over a hundred sales, and again, all the profits. All oh, Kirk donated everything. He donated his time. He donated the shirts, and all the money went to Hawaii Community Foundation. And then we had the mayor on. Mayor Kaukami was on one night. He'd been on several times, and he talked about being young and and being the doodle boy. You remember the doodle boy when you were young? That so hey, called doodle Kirk, boy. Then Kirk made a shirt. This is the front. Don't be a and the back, Doodle Boy. <laughs> and had all the sayings of the COVID experience. Oh, wow. And that sold uh, uh, over 200 shirts. And then we had Tina Yamaki, retail merchants uh, of Hawaii. Yeah, I she talked to her tonight. Show. Trina, you talked to her tonight. Re ask her. She, she, she didn't call the people Doodle Boy. She called them Okole Pukas. So <laughs> we did the Okole Puka shirt. And now that is is selling, and then he just created a Kawaii Strong shirt. Uh, I don't have the logo available, but that that is really nice, selling a lot of those shirts. So I uh, just wanted to give you a little history of the shirts and uh, the slogans, and and amazing. Uh, this this platform is is incredible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> look, now they're saying we need a shirt for wear e kapuna. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. On that one, on that one, we're gonna put Charlie's picture only. Oh, <laughs> That's so classic. Hey, you know, I know we're gonna be finishing off. I really appreciate you guys so much, and a big aloha note to my my good buddy, the Senate President Ron Kuchi, and uh, my my friend Mayor Kawakami. To your two representatives, uh, you know, thank you so much. You know, for I think you guys got more than two, right? Who you guys three. got? Now? We get three now. Three. Great. Nadine Nakamura, Jimmy Tokioka, and yeah. Dee Morikawa. Yeah. Oh, my aloha to those three, because they're they're friends of mine too. And so, and, and tell, uh, Tokioka, I'll see him at Asahi's Grill over here in Honolulu. You know. So, <laughs> thanks, thanks, you guys. Mahalo, so yeah, you, you, any any closing thoughts to who's what? We got a lot of Kupuna watching. We got a lot of people that uh, obviously uh, have Kupuna. So, fire away. Well, Kupuna, uh, you know, again, uh, we, all, we all will become, 
you know, we all will become kupuna if you're not there yet, you know. So enjoy the ride. And when you get there, uh, you know, you're not going to get there until you become. And then when it's power, just it's a good life. And, you know, we, we aloha each other along the way. So that's kupuna power. Yeah, everybody said, so take it easy. I just figured it out. Now, this is the, this is the symbol for I love you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, so I was talking to my son, Sean, and I said, take the I love you and turn it this way. And what letter is that? He says, oh, that's K. I said, okay, do this. What letter is that? He said, oh, that's P. So right here, Kupuna Pao. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you, thank you uh, Senator Brickwood Galateria. Charlie, any closing yeah. thoughts? Well, you know, I, I, I want to thank the folks. Um, uh, I, on purpose, I said, we're e Kupuna to keep you online. And, and <laughs> that's his, that's my wife said, Charlie, don't push it. <laughs> oh, uh, Patsy, you don't need to worry. Mrs. Yon, Mrs. Yon already telling me I can hear you through the walls already. I about it and he brought it back. <laughs> but I like to say, uh, Brickwood, thank you so much. And again, you know, we, we just got to make sure that. And, and you said it perfectly that, you know, Kupuna goes two ways. We help them, they help everybody else. And I think if we have that relationship and we can expound upon it, I tell you, it would be a fantastic thing. Because, you know, right now there's so much distraction going on. There's so much distraction. And, and you know, sometimes it's even to the point where when you talk to the, the old timers, they say Hawaii is not like how it used to be. And during this COVID period, when everything was shut down, we got to see the beauty of Hawaii come back. And that's, you know, that's something that, uh, man, I really, I really want that back so badly. And I got to see it firsthand this go around. But thanks to you, Brickwood. I appreciate you making the time to come on with us tonight. Thank you, brother. Mahalo, brother. Mahalo. Thank you. Like Charlie said, uh, Brickwood, thank you, thank you, man. It's been a long time. I miss seeing you in in the halls over there. But uh, man, what a way to great way to reconnect. I, I'm sure we'll be asking you to come back on as time goes on. You know, we're gonna continue this show uh, well beyond COVID, hopefully. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have sponsors like you, but maybe you can put in a good word for us. <laughs> oh, hey, absolutely, brother. Absolutely. <laughs> and and then um, um, next week we're gonna have our uh, county clerk and elections officers, uh, election officer on to talk about the voting, uh, the new voting style, new voting system, and all that. But anyway, Brickwood, uh, Charlie wrote this song uh, a while ago. What happened when we started this show? Our main focus, our main goal, was to inform and educate. Really, just teach people uh, with, you know, like the shirt says, to flatten the curve. We needed to flatten the curve, and we needed to do it as soon as possible. And we, we focused on the, the tips, the safety tips, the no touch your face, wash your hands, social distancing. And, you know, in the beginning, no one was listening. No one was listening. Everybody was still messing around. Uh, numbers was jumping all over the place in America, but Hawaii was relatively low. So Charlie and I went to see the police chief and said, hey, deputize us as COVID agents, and we'll go out and we'll catch these guys that ain't following the rules, and we'll probably come by having to, forcing them to spend next 24 hours with Charlie and me. Wow. That didn't work either. So, Charlie, I, I, I asked Charlie, Charlie, why don't you write a song? And he did. And this is the song that he wrote. And every every show, every night, well, I shouldn't say that because we kind of miss a few times, but most of the night, we close the show with this song that Charlie wrote. Um, and really, the message is clear. If you're not going to flatten the curve, then we will flatten your ears. Charlie! And then, and then we take a screenshot of our guests because they look like you. Every single one of them get the same facial expression as you. Thank you, Brickwood. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys tomorrow night at 7 o'clock sharp. Be there. Aloha. You guys stay safe. God bless. Love you guys. Aloha. Aloha.